We were praying, continue, constantly praying. Let me give you a little advice, a little admonition from experience regarding the works part. You might want to start saving some money. You might want to start saving a little money. Let me give you a tangible example. This is part of our testimony. Last year, July last year, let me go back a couple of months before that. Brother Jeremiah Davis was speaking in Southern California. This is maybe May, April. And his wife, Aretha, gave the offered the children's story at this church. It was the Fontana Church. She's given the children's story, and at the, toward the end of the children's story, she kind of goes off on a little tangent. I believe it was the Holy Spirit. It was Providence. She goes off on a little tangent. She starts out of, it wasn't even related really to the story. She starts talking about their move to the country, just out of the blue. They, they moved out on faith. They packed all their boxes. They, they packed everything up. They were living out of boxes, this and that, and the Lord moved. And we sat there, and we heard that. So we said, and we knew, we knew we were aware of the principle, but we just weren't really exercising it. Are you with me? So we, after that meeting, that night, we said, you know what? We need to move out on faith more. We were doing things, but not all the way doing things, all the way, all the way, right? And other families decided to do the same thing. So we decided to pack everything up, everything, put it all in a U-Haul, put my little Camry on the back, on a carrier, drove it to Tennessee. This is July, mid-July last year. Drove it to Tennessee, put it all in storage, and then drove back to California by myself. Faith. Now, as soon as we did, and we did something before that, as a matter of fact, before we, I even made that move. We had an SUV, my, life, my wife's beloved SUV. We sold that. We put that. I'm, getting, I'm just giving you some tangible works. Tangible. I'm trying to be transparent and private at the same time. Put her SUV on Craigslist. Ask the Lord to sell it. The Lord sold it the very next day for the price we wanted, cash, cash. Now you tell me, when you start to move in faith, God's arm will move. He's, it's like he said, okay, okay, brother and sister Bridges, I, I, I see now you're serious, so now I'm going to get serious. You're moving your arm, I'm going to move my arm now on your behalf. I'm going to start working my purposes out to get you out of the city, because now I see you really mean business. You really mean business. So a month later, the, 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 uh, actually not even a whole month, a few weeks later after I bought everything to Tennessee and put it in stores, we lived off of paper plates and paper cups and had nothing. A chair here, a chair, no furniture. We said, this is it, Lord. We're going all the way, all the way. A couple of weeks later, at the upper room camp meeting in 2014, the brothers here right now, Brother Parks, brought it to our attention that there was a house available somewhere in Tennessee, which I won't mention. So, out of, out of respect. So, again, the Lord began to move. He began to move. Praise his name. So we have to have faith, yes, but we have to also have some works, or the faith is what? It's dead, according to the Bible. So, you ready to go shopping? Amen. Praise God. Our people should be looking for opportunities to purchase properties where? Away from the cities on which are buildings already erected and orchards already in bearing. Now, that's not always going to be the case. You have like a checklist, maybe 10 things that you want to have that are really necessary that you need. If you have 8 out of 10 and maybe that's not there, you're doing well. But it all depends on what's important as far as level of priority. Many people are buying property that doesn't have any trees. They're planting their trees when they get there. Or they're starting a garden when they get there. Or starting an orchard when they get there. Many people do it that way. These are some important points to consider. Very important. And these are just a few. How many acres do you need? Hmm. What is the nearest town? What is the, po is the population of that town? How far away is the nearest town? Those are things you have to really think about when you're shopping. How far away is the nearest large city of 100,000 plus people so you can go shopping and buy the things you really need? Is it an hour away, two hours away? What is the population density of the county you live, you're looking at, of the county? We talked about population density yesterday, last night. What is the average precipitation in the county? Can you grow food with no water, yes or no? No, you have to have water. 
What is the annual snowfall in the county in terms of your vegetation in the winter, maybe? What's the average high and low temperatures in January and July? How many growing seasons are there and how long? How far to county maintain road? Shared driveway or easement? You don't want that. You want to be very careful not to have a situation where, and you see a lot of things on the internet, you might see a property you like, and it turns out that the driveway is being shared, maybe shared with somebody who's an unbeliever. Might not be a good scenario. We have to consider these things. Is there landline telephone service? Hmm. Cell phone service? Internet? Those of us in ministry, we need to have these things are very important. At some point in time, though, we do need to what? Cut these things off at some point in the future. We'll get into that on Friday. Is there 911, 911 service uh, in the area operating? 911, 911. Is there a subdivision? You don't want to live in a subdivision. Any zoning laws, right? There are things that you can't do in California that you can do in a lot of other states. Building or st uh, does the state require building permits? Who owns the water, timber, and mineral rights? Some states you can actually build anything you want and not have to go to the authorities for permission. California, you have to get permission for everything. Everything, you have to ask permission, get permits for this, permits for that. Some states, you can't even capture rainwater and use it. Water out of the sky from God, you have to get permits to use or not be able to use it at all. It's against the law. Against the law. Pretty soon it'll be air. Does the property have a clean title? That's important. Is surface water present on the property? Does fruit grow in the area? What kind? How, how close is the nearest neighbor? Very important as well. Very important. So we talked about this yesterday. Just going to do a quick review. Our first property, our first country home in, in Tennessee. Too close to the neighbors. Too close to all these. All the neighbors are too close. This side was good. It was about four acres. This was all open. Not so good here. Driveways too close, mailboxes, everything was just too close. It wasn't a good situation. It felt good being out of the city, and this was the country. This was a town of about 1,200 people, very small. No sidewalks, no stores, no uh, signal lights. There was uh, one gas station and a little you know, country store in the gas station and one post office, and that was it. So it was the country, but we just were in a place that wasn't quite so secluded or isolated. Needed to have more elbow room, as Sister White says, right? So here are some websites that we used to look at almost every day. And when I tell you it was a job, looking for a home is a job. And it's a full-time job. So Zillow was a very popular one, very much so. Realtor.com is a good one. And you'll also find, and you can find all these online yourself. I'm just giving these as examples. I'm letting you know our experience. A lot of these might have some information on them that others don't. For instance, maybe Zillow won't have the acreage where Realtor.com will. So just little things like that, little you know, differences in the information that each website provides. This is a very popular company, too. It's not pronounced cry leaky or cry likey. It's actually pronounced cry like, like cry like a baby. And they're very popular, and they're very good with country property as well. Cry like is a good one. And again, they have information a lot of times that the other, like, the, for instance, the water source. <clears throat> Many times Zillow won't have the water source. Is, is it public? Is it county? Is it city? Is it well water? They won't have that. But Cry Like usually does have that on their website. This is Trulia. Trulia is a pretty good one, too. We use that a lot when we were looking around. Remax is another one. Very popular. We use that one as well. In fact, our first realtor worked with Remax. The first realtor we had, uh, the only realtor actually, because there was no realtor with our, with our second go-around. It was for sale by owner, which is a good situation to be in as well. Hotpads.com. Never used them. I've heard some good things about it. Hotpads.com. eBay. Now, don't laugh. I've been hearing some good things about eBay. Very good things. eBay sells real estate. They sell homes. You'd be surprised. Craigslist, again, don't laugh. Craigslist sells houses. You can find some great deals on Craigslist. Country deals, too. Absolutely, craigslist.com. Look up your state, your area, the closest city or, or, or suburb or whatever, and usually they have the people that are selling homes in outlying areas put their ads 
in the, in the cities closest to them. They do that. ZipRealty.com is another one. ZipRealty. Homes.com, very popular one. Homes.com. HUDHomes.com. Now, this is for government own homes, right? Foreclosures. This is, this is a very good website. You'll get some good deals on here. HUDHomes.com. HUDHomes.com. This is Bid Select. Now, our first home, the first property we got in the country in 2009, 2010, we've actually found that property on this website. We found it on this website. Again, it's a, it's a government owned foreclosure website. They don't seem as diverse now as they were then. There have been some changes, but I would still check them out. And it's a very interesting situation. You don't talk to a human being. The real, your realtor actually has to bid for you electronically on, on the internet, on the website. And he never talks to a person either. Everything is done through the internet. And you bid and you wait and you find out and you wait and you bid and you win. And we won. But God did it. Amen? Amen. So bid select's a good one. Homepath.com. It's another good one. Homepath. Foreclosed homes. Foreclosures. Homepath.com. We're going shopping. Amen. With God's help. Amen. Mother Earth News. Great magazine. It was a magazine for many years since the 70s. Now they have a great website that has, includes all type of things. Building, cooking, planning, everything. But they also sell land and property. They also sell land and property. So there's their, the portion of their website where they have houses for sale, country land for sale. Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, Texas, Tennessee, Montana, Arkansas, Texas. Amen, amen. So Mother, MotherEarthNews.com. Realty Track. Another foreclosure website, Realty Track with a C, T R A C, dot com. That's another one people use. Very popular. Very, very popular. United Country. All they sell is country property. That's it. United Country Real Estate. Country Living Resources. Now, this website here is exclusively set up for Seven Day at Venice. Seven Day at Venice sell homes on this website and they, they market or promote their website to other Seventh-day Adventists. So every home you see on here will be for sale by a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Very, yeah, very, very reliable resource. <clears throat> Not a whole lot of property, but they do have property. Amen. This is a website, if you don't have it, or a feature or an app on your computer, you have to get this. This is Google Earth. Google Earth, you have to have this. What this gives you a chance to do is to be able to zoom in anywhere basically on the planet, not just America, but anywhere, and you can get a, an overhead sa satellite shot of the property you're interested in purchasing or looking at. So it gives you a nice view of proximity of where your house is located compared to the neighbors and the topography on the land, etc. So what you do is type in an address, and then what it happens is, it'd be, I should have done this in real time, but <clears throat> in the interest of time, you type in an address and it starts to zoom in. I believe the address I typed in for this one, for example, was a church that my wife and I spoke at last year in Northern California in the town of Salinas, the Salinas Seventh-day Adventist Church. So we zoom in. There's Salinas. That's the address. You zoom in a little closer. You start to see the outline of the town. It's kind of a farming community, so you see all that as, as well. Amen. You see the mountains over here, so everything becomes crystal clear, right? A little closer. Now you're really zooming in. You see all the layout of the streets and the neighborhoods, and there's the church right there in the middle. And then there's the church right there. That's the church, and this is the fellowship hall, and this is the parking lot and other buildings. And that's the street level. Many times you can get a street level of the property you're trying to buy or trying to see. A lot of times in the country, you may not have access to a street level because the house is so remote. But in this situation, usually there's an option to have an opportunity to see a close-up of the street of the property. This is another one. This is the Central Filipino uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Los Angeles. Brother Mason spoke in there before. I spoke there a few times. And they had a street view as well. There's, you see the freeway right next to it. That's the, uh, the, the um, 210 freeway. This is Colorado Boulevard. And that's the church, Central Filipino. Very big church, by the way. But that's a feature, feature that this, uh, this website does. So I'm going to skip this. That's, again, the same thing, Google Earth on the property we owned five years ago. 
and that's the street view. And again, this is a country house now, and it gives you a street view. So in, in other words, you have an option to get the street view when it's available, when it's available. This, if you're taking notes, please write this down. This is citydata.com, city-data.com. This is a must resource. You have to use this. It's a must. It gives you just about every categorical piece of information you can get on a town or zip code area. Very, very, very important to have. Very helpful. Citydata.com. I picked a random town, Sandpoint, Idaho. Sandpoint, Idaho. It's in northern Idaho. I type that in. It gives you usually a few pictures that some of the residents have sent in. I'm just scrolling down. Then it gives you a little map. It gives you the population, the demographic breakdown, male, female, the median age, the income level, et cetera, et cetera. And it gives you an outline of the town. Again, skipping down some more, it gives you the demographic breakdown, if that's important to you. Continues to get more information. The ancestries of the residents there, the local time, the elevation, 2,085 feet. That's not bad, right? That's not bad. The land area, 3.99 miles. The population density, 1,896 people per square mile. That's considered low. That's considered low. Just going to give you a little more information about this website. There it gives you in relation to that corner of the country. That's where it's located, the red dot. That's a skylight view or, or a satellite view. It gives you the age, the high school graduates, college graduates, the nearest towns of 50,000 or more, how many miles away it is. So the nearest town, 50,000 people or more, is Spokane, Washington. The population is actually 195,000, 57 miles. That's a little close. That's a little close, I would say. The nearest city of 200,000 plus is East Seattle, 263 uh, miles away. That's good. That's very good. And of course, Seattle has 480,000 people. Nearest city with 1 million people plus, of course, is LA, and it's 985 miles away. <coughs> south. It even gives you the direction. LA is south of Idaho, of, uh, spoke of uh, Sandpoint, Idaho. It's south. 36, 3 million people. So all the small towns that are close by, it gives all that. The average cost of the buildings and the homes. It gives graph number of permits, uh, average cost of the homes, household income, household values. We talked about the crime rate index last night. The crime rate index there is pretty low, 221. Average temperatures, the climate per year, precipitation, humidity, wind speed, snowfall, sunshine. It really breaks it down. It really does. I love this website. Earthquake activity, natural disasters, causes of natural disasters. It talks about businesses there, banks, hospitals in the area, colleges and universities. We're not going to get into that. High schools, elementary, libraries, cemeteries, different parks, tourist attractions, hotels, air pollution, air quality. All these things, very, very comprehensive. Banks, again, fire-safe hotels in the area. Travel time to work, most commonly use house heating fuels. Adhe uh, the the, the um, religious adherents, see the pie here, Catholic, Evangelical, Latter-day Saints, Seventh-day Adventists, praise the Lord. Nine percent, nine percent, not bad. So number of super centers, I'm sure that's Walmart, right? Convenience stores, convenience stores, full service restaurants, adult diabetic rate, adult obesity. It's just very, very comprehensive. Again, it's very, very comprehensive. So we talked about this last night. And we talked about how we had to we used this, these websites to find out what we needed to know about Tennessee. Once we felt like the Lord was leading us to Tennessee, we used all this information to basically decide where in the state we wanted to live. So these websites give a lot of information. I love citydata.com. We talked about all this last night. And we decided to move in the area where we'd be furthest away from, but I didn't touch on this last night, actually. We determined that where we moved to, which was right around here, right between Nashville and Memphis, was ironically enough, it was exactly 120 miles 
away each direction. So Nashville was 120, 120 miles away and Memphis was 120 miles away. They were both about the same distance. So we would get on the local highway, we'd come down to Interstate 40, or we'd go out this way. So it wasn't too far to go shopping and go to Costco and different places. It took about maybe two hours or so. And a lot of times in the country, of course, you have what they call country miles. And again, I'm explaining this, I'm breaking this down for the, the person who doesn't know about country living, the novice. When you have a country setting, you're going to be stuck on certain roads that are going to have you driving a little slower than the main road. So a place that might take you usually 90 minutes to get to may take you two hours because some stretches may have you driving 20 miles an hour or 25 miles or maybe even 10 miles an hour. Or you might get stuck behind a tractor or a bush hog, right? That happens too. That was an eye-opening experience for us. It was a, it was a culture shock, actually. But, but God is good. Praise the Lord. So I want to repeat these from last night. I think we may have some new viewers, and it bears repeating. Out of the cities is my message at this time. Be assured that the call is for our people to locate how far? Miles away from the large cities. Some people believe a gas tank away. Some people say 100 miles. Some people say 50, depending on how big that city is that is 50 miles away. Some people say, well, 75. Some people don't want to be even in the same state as a big city. So again, it's, it all depends on where the Lord leads you. Your experience is between you and the Lord. The Bridges family is not a template for anybody, but we're going to talk about the template that we have in a few minutes. Now, part of that template is what we discussed in the opening. All the scriptures we went through with all the promises, also from the spirit of prophecy, all those promises are the templates we use for God to open the door for us. And he can do it for you, for you too, amen? He wants you or us to live where we can have elbow room so we can't be too close to our neighbors. We have to stress and overemphasize that. We have to have space so we can be free from interference from who will at some point become our enemies and our bitterest enemies. In fact, I'll read that here. We should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again. Repeatedly, God says, Get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded together or closely together and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. I got an email today from somebody who watched last night. And they asked, they had mentioned that their mom was wondering or questioning about why can't we have, I want to be in the country, but I want neighbors. The answer is right here. We can't be crowded together so we'll be free from the interference of enemies. If they don't believe what we believe, they're enemies. They're enemies. And they're going to really be enemies at the passing of the what? The National Sunday Law. Yes, unless God changes their hearts. Amen? We are not to locate ourselves where we will be forced into close relations with those who do not honor God. That's very important, too. A crisis is soon to come in regard to the observance of Sunday. Sunday is coming. So this is a situation with data, citydata.com. This is the zip code for the town that we were living in a few years ago. Sometimes on this website, and again, I can't, I can't say this enough. You have to use this website. But many times the town is so small, it won't show up on this website. So what you do is type in the zip code. It has every zip code. So this is the zip code for that town we were in, 38348. And it will give the same information, sometimes even more, for the zip code but not the town. And again, Lavinia, population density, only 21 people per square mile. We hardly saw anybody, of course, except our, our close neighbor. Hardly any cars, but we did see them from time to time. L.A., big difference, 8,224 people per square mile. So what are we looking for when we're looking for a home? I'm not going to steal the thunder of the Franklin family. They're going to give a very nice presentation to us on Sabbath afternoon, living off the grid. I'm just touching on these three points. These are important. We have to consider these when looking for and asking God to give us or entrust us with a country property. Three great pillars of country living. A water source, number one. A heat source, that's of course wood, number two. And a food source, a place to be able to grow food. So water source being, of course, a well or a spring head or year-round spring or a stream or whatever you may have on that property is essential. 
You may want to start off with county or city water in the beginning, but at some point you have to have your own source because we know from inspiration every earthly support is going to be what? It's going to be cut off. So we have to be able to not to depend on man. We have to have our own resource, independent of man. Sustainable preparedness, in other words. And that reminds me, I'm going to promote a book before we close. I'm going to talk about that at the end, at the end. Heat source, have to have wood. The basic understanding is that you need to have five acres or more of wood, five acres to sustain a family for a few years. You've got to have wood. You've got to have trees. You have to have trees. Do not buy a piece of land with no trees on it. You'll pay. You must have some trees. Amen? And again, we have to have somewhere to plant food because we know, again, all we're going to have to eat are our own provisions. That's why we're told that we have to, we have to buy land that gives us an opportunity to do that, to, to, to grow our own food. Amen? Amen. So, this is the possibility. This is what God wants to give you. If we're faithful, I'm going to repeat. We're nobody special. God put us in the country by a miracle. And he can do it for you too. We just have to have faith in his promises. The nobleman wanted to see the fulfillment of his prayer before he should believe. Hmm. But he had to accept the word of Jesus that his request was heard and the blessing granted. This lesson we also have to learn. Not because we see or feel that God hears us are we to believe. We are to trust in his promises. Do we trust? Do we trust? When we come to him in faith, and we know we read earlier, faith pleases him. Without that, we can't please the Lord. Every petition enters the heart of God. When we have asked for his blessing, we should believe that we receive it. Believe it when we ask for it. And thank him that we have received it. Do you see the principle there? That's faith. Then we are to go about our duties, assured that the blessing will be realized when we need it most. So you pray to God, ask him for the blessing, and you go about your day. I know you're going to answer it. You're not going to answer it the way I think you're going to answer it, but you're going to answer it. That's faith. That's faith. When we have learned to do this, we shall know that our prayers are answered. Hmm. Did you get that lesson? God will do for us exceeding abundantly according to the riches of his glory and the working of his mighty power. So, I'm going to read a quote that we read over and over and over again. A beautiful quote from the Spirit of Prophecy in the Desire of Ages. Page 668, paragraph 1. It is a wonderful quote. We stuck by it. We stood by it in faith. And God blessed are you ready to read it? And we're going to go point by point. It's very important. In fact, why don't we pray before we read? Because I want to make sure we, we really, the viewers really, really, really get this. Really get this. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your love and for sending Jesus to die on our behalf. The death that we surely desire or deserve to die. He loves us so much, and we do not even nearly appreciate the love he has for us. Thank you, Father, from the bottom of our hearts over and over again. I pray, Lord, as we read these words from your heavenly throne room that you gave to your prophet, inspire her to write these words, Lord, that they would sink deep into our hearts and into our souls, that we truly grasp the, the pure understanding of them, the nature of them, what they mean, and how deep they are. And that we can apply them, Lord, to our lives, and that we can claim the promise con contained therein, and that we can receive a great blessing from heaven if we only have faith and listen and believe in Thee. We have too much faith in mankind. Help us, Father, to overcome our unbelief. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Desire of Ages. 668, paragraph 1. Here we go. The Lord is disappointed when his people place a low estimate upon themselves. Do you want to disappoint Jesus? I don't. I don't. He desires his chosen heritage, that's us, 
to value themselves according to the price he has placed upon them. Hmm. So we have value based on the price he placed upon us. The price of his son Jesus. God wanted them, that's all of us, else he would not have sent his son on such an expensive errand to redeem them, to buy us back, to buy us back. He has a use for them, and he is what? Well pleased when they make the very highest demands upon him, that they may glorify his name. Now, are we talking about a $5 million, 5,000 square foot house on Staten Island? No, not at all, according to his will. They may expect large things if they have faith in his promises. So number one, he has a use for us. So when he puts us in the country, there's something for us to do there. Otherwise, he wouldn't have put us there in the first place. Well, the first point is that Jesus came to die for us, which means he has a use for us. That's the point. He has a use for us. He is well pleased when we make the highest, the very highest demands, she says, upon him. The very highest. So we know Hebrews 11 says that through faith, only through faith, we can please him. But he's well pleased when we make the very highest demands through faith that he will come through and glorify his name by doing so. We may expect large things if we have the faith in his promises. It's a beautiful equation. But first we have to come to him in faith and ask and believe that he's going to do it. And then, going back to all the promises we claimed in the early part of our lesson, we have to eliminate and overcome sin. We have to, we have to gain the victory. We have to gain the victory. Amen? Let's go to Second Peter before we close. Second Peter. Second Peter, verse 1, chapter 1, and verse 1. Book of Second Peter. Second Peter, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us, precious what? Precious faith through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Key verse here, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, Again, doing what? Having faith in his not only promises, the Bible says precious promises, that by these ye may be partakers or might be partakers of the divine nature, Jesus Christ, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Brother, sister, we can do it. We can do it, but only through faith in Jesus. We have to tap into that power source. Tap in. He left. He left us. The Comforter. He says, ask for him, and he'll be there for us. Are you asking tonight? He wants us in the country, but we have to have the faith that he will take us there, and he will do it. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.